Hello everyone, in this video I will be showing you how to create Fortnite animations with Mixamo in Blender. So basically what Mixamo is, is this online website that has a bunch of presets for like motion capture animation and stuff and the best part about it is you can kind of take any character and it will rig it for you automatically and then you can add that motion capture to that character. In this video I'll be showing you how to do that with any like Fortnite skin but in this case uh, I will be using snake eyes um, yeah so I will leave the model for the skin in the description below you guys can go download it and create some motion capture animations with it uh, yeah the one downside to using Mixamo is uh, it does not use facial animation so you can't animate the face to make different poses that's why snake eyes is kind of a good choice for this because it only really has a head, it can't like move its mouth or anything, it's just this, right? So when you download Snake Eyes, it should look like this. It has the basic IK rig, right? But if you want to use Mixmo with this, you can't actually use this skeleton. You can't use this at all. So what you have to do first is you have to open this up. You have to click the drop down, open it, and then you click on this, and then you delete this. So now you're just left with the actual skin with no armature to animate it with. This will just allow it to be imported into Mixamo. So I have a smooth modifier on and it also has an armature one. I'm just gonna delete the armature modifier, right? So boom, that's all you need right there, right? So first thing you do is you want to export it in FBX format. This is really important to make sure it's FBX because um, it'll remember the vertex groups for the materials so you can re-import the materials later because you'll lose all the information in the process of exporting it. So what you have to do is export it as FBX, right? Go to download, just name it whatever. I'm gonna name it Snake Eyes, obviously. I'm gonna name it Snake Eyes too because I already have the Snake Eyes FBX. So you export it, boom. Before you close, just make sure it's right there. See right there, there it is. Yeah, you just wanna make sure that the file is there, right? So now you can close it. I, I can just not save this because I already have the same file of this, right? Go to your Chrome, search up mixamo.com, mix ammo. So once you sign in, it'll look like this. I already had a character that I rigged over here, so that's why this character is here. And basically, it has so many different presets of animation. 52 pages, right? Of just different animations you can apply, right? To your skin, right? So, oh, shoot. So, browse animations. What you really want to do is you just want to click upload character. You don't need to do it on an animation because you can have the character you can upload the character and then just use it with any animation. You don't need to use it with just one. So you select the character file, import the FBX that you just exported from Blender, right? It might take a moment for it to process. Like a, sometimes it takes a few minutes depending on what kind of character you're exporting. So once you have this set up, right? Hit next. And this is kind of the part that will make your motion capture look good or not, right? So this will, these points right here, you have to place them on your model where they are. So this is the chin, right? We want to put this around right here, right? And the wrist, this is the right wrist. We'll put it right here. This is the right wrist. This is the left side, but as you can see, he's facing this way. For him, this would be the right side. So you want to put it right there. Here's the left wrist. Um, make sure you have used symmetry on, so it'll just have a better it'll just be more accurate so I'm gonna say around there's the wrist you can kind of see it zoomed up on the side and then the elbows make sure you have the same thing in the right spot so this is right elbow this will go over here I'm just gonna grab the left elbow and put it probably uh, let's see right there that looks good yeah right there and then knees this is the right knee left knee take this boom and I don't really think, it shouldn't really matter too much, but I'm just doing that because in the groin, put that around right over the shading part right there. And then just hit next, and then it might take a second. Sometimes the result of the rigging doesn't always look too good, 
but you can always go back and re-upload the skin and then just put those points on again until it looks the way you want it to. Okay, once it's loaded, you should see your character here. Um, you can kind of see how well the rig works if you just like look at it, you know what I mean? All the joints are working correctly. And another uh, cool thing it does is it uh, rigs the actual fingers too. So you can kind of try to see if the fingers are working. Like you can see the fingers are bending pretty well, I'd say. Right, so you can just hit next, boom. And then your 3D character has been uploaded, proceed with this new character. So I have an other character. This is one is gonna be switched out with it. So I'd have to re-upload that same character if I wanted that other character back. Okay, so hit next, right? Don't worry about what I'm saying. So you have it out here now. All the stuff is right here. Okay, so you have your character in, right? Choose an animation that you find most appealing, right? You can just do something like, you have some genres of animation, combat, adventure, sport, dance, all that good stuff. There's literally unlimited, and you don't even have to use Fortnite skins. You can use characters that comes already pre-rigged, and it loops too, so. Yeah, you can change some of these sliders up here. This one will give them a bigger range of motion, right? And then this obviously will give them a very small range of motion. So I'm just gonna keep it like that. Download, Every all the default settings are pretty much the ones that I'm gonna use. If you are going to use a different like FPS for your animation, you can literally just change that right here. So yeah, I usually just use 30, but you can hit download, right? might take a couple moments right see it should start downloading at the bottom left right hip-hop dancing there we go you can just exit out of this right and then you open back up blender so what you want to do is you can just go import fbx right go to your downloads uh, and then you look for that same thing hip-hop dance that was the one I see, you can already see I have a bunch all of these are from Mixamo <laughs> Okay, so hip hop dancing, that's right here. Here it is, right here. So see, it, it kind of stops right here and it is able to be looped. So I can literally just duplicate these keyframes. Yeah, see, you can see that's duplicated, right? I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna create a super long animation. I can just create it like this long, 135 frames, right? Right, that's all we need. Oh, and it still loops anyway, so exactly. So I'm just gonna save this animation animation test yeah why not so you have your animation here but you go to shaded textures and it's just white right but the cool thing with using F fbx is it saves that same vertex group of this is his body texture this is his head texture so what you want to do to get the textures back is you go back to your file right hit file go to append and then wherever you saved the snake eyes skin in like that other project right snake eyes here's my project file for him it's gi joe fully textured ik rig right so you go to material and then here you have those two saved materials right grab those click append right nothing happened right so what you do first you go down here to the right m med convoy tarantula body you click this little drop down right here, and then you can see those textures right here. The 001, and then the 001 here. Those are the correct textures. So you click that, boom, there's his body back. Go to the head, click this drop down, and then enable the head texture right here. And there you go, it's already back. <clears throat> so the next thing we're gonna do, I'm just gonna add some final touches to create the animation and make it look better, right? I'm just gonna go down here. To my render I'm gonna just make this 32 samples right nothing crazy uh, I'm gonna turn off denoising for the renderer because I'm gonna use the image noise uh, no denoiser I'm gonna enable the animated seed this is these are my light bounces uh, motion blur motion blur that's good uh, I'm gonna be rendering with a CPU so I'm gonna use I mean a GPU sorry so I'm gonna use 256 by 256 pixels for each tile that'll that's for me that's probably the most optimized I could have this and for the color management I'm gonna probably just have a medium contrast and a filmic workspace I'm also gonna use linear 
<clears throat> and then I'm also going to enable transparency so when I click the viewport everything behind him is transparent. The lighting looks pretty bland because the background is just a gray image so what else I'm going to do I am going to go down to shading and then I'm going to click on the object tab switch that to world and then I have a bunch of these things just delete everything there right and then click shift a click search and then search up environment texture environment environment okay you click open and then you can find uh, HDRI on hdrihaven.com or well yeah any really any other spot or whatever you know what I mean okay so you find your HDRI you want to use and you just put that into the thing oh this one leading home market that one's honestly my favorite so boom go back here and you can already see that lighting looks so much better might turn up the uh, exposure a little bit I'll set that to two-ish right now you can kind of see him dancing it's no motion blur but that's just because it's the viewport so right Uh, compositing up here click use nodes bada bing bada boom hit options click open CL that'll enable GPU calculations use that for sure I'm just gonna click end to close that and then control a to go in to a bigger screen make sure you're using alpha because I want it to be a transparent background so click shift a again search up denoise click it enable it put it in the middle right there Take the denoising normal, connect that to the normal, and then denoising albedo, connect connect that to the albedo. So yeah, that's what enabling the denoise data does, is it brings out these four channels right here, which you can use to denoise and give a more detailed denoising to the compositor. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is go back here and probably just create a camera, right? I'm gonna go into camera view, I'm going to view up here, click view up here, navigation, walk navigation, and then I can use the WASD and the E and Q keys to go up and down and move around and just create a good, you know, good spot for the camera to be. Just say somewhere right there, somewhere in the middle. That's not the middle. Um, somewhere around there is pretty good, actually. So once you have that, you can just... You can mess with these settings. I would just keep the vocal length, focal length at 50. That's like the default. That's what your eyes see. So it shouldn't be too harsh or... So yeah, you can see what that does. It just zooms in and out like a normal camera would. So keep that at 50. Uh, depth of field for this kind of thing, you don't really need it, but for more cinematic shots, you might want to use it. And then yeah, down here, just for me, what I usually do, I just turn off the overwrite and make compression zero. And then you create a folder where you want to save all your PNGs, right? You got the folder right here, except boom. All that's good. You got your frame rate, hopefully at 30 FPS or whatever you wanted your animation to be saved at. So basically, you're good. You can just hit render and start it, but I'm going to just enable lock interface that'll just make the render a little more smoothly and then also for the materials those white materials that he wasn't using the character I'm just gonna click clean her jaw and just click keep clicking clean up her jaw until you have no until it just doesn't allow you to purge it anymore I always like to do that before I render just so I can get all the unnecessary nodes and textures out of my sequence and it doesn't have to load all that before it renders each image so yeah, that's pretty good. You can just render it from there. You don't have to use cycles, but you, it's my favorite. I'm using GPU, compute, compute. You can also use CPU. Everything looks good. Um, to make it look better, I'm going to use this trick that I used in my other video, which is what you do is you go to compositing. I'm just going to enable a viewer node right here. Connect that to this, hold shift, and draw with the left right click with the right click so yeah hold shift right click and draw a line through here that'll just create this little channel right here and it'll 
make it a little easier to work, right? So, Control A. I'm in this spot now. Glare. Gonna give it some glares, right? Can give it the image data. Make this high quality. It's on streaks. That's good. Maximize the iterations to five. Mix. Make that one. Uh, threshold 0.25. 0.25. You can. You don't really have to do this exact, but this is what I like to do. Boom. Boom. Created another glare node. Change this from streaks to fog glow. The mix is on one that's good. Threshold. Change that to 0 0.04. 0 0.04. 0 .04, and then change the size to max, which is 9. <clears throat> Next thing is we're going to actually start adding the glares. So, Shift A. Search. Mix, drag it onto this line right here, click, change this from mix to add, and then hover, click on the add, and then click shift, then D, no, control, then D, no, yeah, shift, then D, and then click the next one onto here, so now you just plug these into here, boom, right there, boom, right there. The glares might be a little too extreme, I usually set them to like three or two. Or just something like that, you know what I mean? See, it gives it a really light, you know, nice feeling. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can kind of see it gives it a little more glow, right? So you can see this is the original right here. From this noisy image to this. Takes a minute to load. Perfect, right? So once you got all that, boom. Control A to escape this area. Click Layout. And then you can just basically hit render, right? Render animation. Up here. Oh, sorry. Uh, there's one more thing, actually. Click plane. Scale this up. A good amount. It doesn't really need to be that much. I'm just going to name it Shadow Catcher. You don't really need to name it anything. But you go down here to the transform or the object properties. You go down to visibility. And then you go to mask and click shadow crat catcher, not cratcher. Shadow catcher. There we go. So now when you go back to here, you can see a shadow is on the plane. Right? And that's yeah, it looks really good. I'm just gonna make sure. Yeah, so his feet is on the ground, so that's good. Don't want him to be floating. I hope you don't want it to be floating, because that'd gotta be a little weird. So yeah, you can render animation, and then yeah, when I'm done, I'll show you guys it. Boom, view animation. Boom, you can see it right there. You can see it's going through all the different images, right? It's looping too, so yeah, that looks pretty good. You can see the shadow catcher is working as expected. Create, create a new, I'm gonna create a brand new project, and then go to video editing, add image sequence, boom. Rough videos, animation test, here it is. Select all, add image strip. Boom. There we go, it's caching everything. Okay, so let's go back to the output. So, compression, I'm just gonna, okay, wait. Yeah, it should just be FFmpeg. Oh, wait, you have to change the container to MPEG-4 right here. And then change the output quality to lossless, and then putting speed, slowest, boom, and then if you're going to use audio and put audio in here, you can just change that to MP3 or whatever you like. <clears throat> and then, yep, create your output folder here, change that from temp to wherever you want it. I'm just going to make it downloads, click accept, boom. And then you can just go over here to render, click render animation. Okay, now that it's done, it's stopped, click X, go to your file folder, go to downloads. There it should be in the MP4 form. But that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed those types of tutorials, then just, you know, keep liking, keep subscribing, you know what I mean? So yeah, uh, that's it. So, okay, see you guys, bye.